Hey, you fucks. Thanks for, you know, checking out the videos, showing a little bit of support. How about you take it to the next level and uh, show us some love over there on Patreon, huh? 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 Yo, 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 what's up everybody out there on the YouTube store, it's your good boy Papa TQ, and I am checking my microphones that were uh, either broken or the part that you see plugged into the microphones is broken, because I've got these uh, mics lapeled into my fucking, uh, in, into my, um, in, into my helmet, and uh, the thing is, is that they got really wet during, <laughs> during a bike trip, I'm stupid, usually I keep them in a plastic bag so they don't get wet, but uh, I didn't do that because I didn't, you know, the weather report said it wasn't going to rain that day, uh, you know, stupid rookie mistake by me, but anyway, yeah, so I'm at home right now while I'm doing this, putting my bag on, oh, this is after I went to Yamada Denki, okay, I remember where I am in this video now, yeah, I went into here to get an SD card because I thought I had brought all my SD cards with me for this trip, and I guess not, so I had to go in there and buy one, I mean, like, that's, God, like, what a world we live in where it's like, I need something for my computer, uh, or my camera, and it's like, okay, I'll just go buy it over here. That's, that's fine. I'll just get it right here. That's not a big deal. Um, but anyway, yeah, guys, how's it going? Yeah, I'm just getting the bike all ready to go here. Uh, you know, recording this conveniently from my apartment here uh, in Tokyo while I'm just watching this footage. And, yeah, anyway, uh, before I get started into everything, let me just shout out the stuff I got to shout out quick. And, uh, yeah, just big shout out to everybody who is uh, watching this. Guys, uh, do me a favor and smash that like button and subscribe button and subscribe bell so you get notified when these come out. I usually, I usually release them on Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings, 9 a.m. here in Tokyo time. I'd like to get to the point where I could release two of these per week, but uh, I don't know if that would keep them this special. I mean, I'd like to make more. It just depends on how often I go on these motorcycle trips, you know? But, um, yeah, anyway, thank you. Big shout out to everybody who does that. Also, uh, I don't get paid by Google AdSense. I get like maybe 20 bucks a month from this stuff. So, uh, this channel is uh, completely funded by you guys. So, uh, yeah, time to get out of here. There's a guy. I can't, oh, like, well, what a useless job. There's, like, nobody who goes in here. The old guy just needs a thing to do. I mean, hey, it's better than staying at home and jerking off. But, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, guys, I mean, th this channel is entirely funded by you guys. So whether you're doing a super chat uh, during the premiere, hello, everybody in the premiere, or if you're doing a super thanks after we've done the premiere in the comment section, uh, yeah, you know, thank you guys so much for that. And, uh, yeah, anybody who signed up for Patreon, whether you're signing up to, like, look at the blogs or behind-the-scenes stuff or you want to learn Japanese or you want a consultation, blah, 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 you're coming over to Japan, you want to hang out and get a tour, all that stuff is available right there on Patreon.com slash Sam. The link's down below. And, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for always for the support, guys. And question of the day, question of the day is, uh, you know, I guess, how do you guys live cheap? How do you leave, live frugally? Because that's going to be the theme of today's uh, rant video. In fact, I should, I might have to get out of here randomly. Uh, I have some friends in town right now. And um, but they're they're checking into a new hotel today, and they're just all over the place. So I am just sitting here waiting for them to hit me up to say when they're finally checked into the new hotel. Cause you know hotels here, I don't know why. Why do hotels do this? It's like why don't they give you an option to pay extra? You know, I know that they got to clean the rooms and stuff every day, but it's like if my friend gets here at 5 a.m. and he wants to check into his hotel, he can bring his baggage and stuff there, and they'll keep it in the checked bag baggage room or whatever but why is it that he can't just pay extra to go check into his uh into his hotel room before 3 p.m you know the guy wants to chill he wants to crash and uh i, I don't understand why places do that i mean maybe it's just because they want to you know the owners don't want to break routine of cleaning or whatever but i always find that kind of stupid but anyway yeah guys question is uh, how do you guys live frugally uh let's share some uh, tricks and tips on uh, how to live frugally here 
and what to do uh, for, uh, you know, uh, keeping our asses in check and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's the question of the day. And, uh, yeah, today we're going from, we're at, right now we're in Chiba City in this video. And it's funny because this is the same street I used to go down uh, when I lived in Chiba City. If you kept going straight down that street for another, like, five minutes or so, you'd get to the old, my first apartment ever in Japan. And uh, it's still there. It's still there. But we're not going that way. We're going on the highway here. And as you can see, this is the big difference between Tokyo and outside Tokyo. There's so much green, like just, just greenery outside, you know, unkempt greenery. You wouldn't see this in Tokyo or you don't see it that much. You know, Tokyo's on point when it comes to cleaning up their shit every day, you know, and like keeping the city looking nice. But anyway, yeah, I used to have to take this road down. Uh, I used to have to take this road from my old place to get to my first uh, school that I taught at here. Like, holy shit. Yeah, it brings back memories each time I'm on this. Good old Route 16, man. And I think this goes all over Japan. It's not just Chiba. And as you can see, right next to there is actually the paid toll road highway, which is funny because, you know, if you go on there, there's no uh, street lights, you know, but at the same time, there's an accident like every day on all the toll, toll roads in Japan. So sometimes if you don't have a motorcycle, you're going to be uh, ass to ass, bumper to bumper traffic. So you got to be careful about that, sons. You just got to be careful. But uh, yeah, anyway, I just, you know, somebody asked me. Uh, and by the way, guys, if you ever want a rant uh, topic, make sure to fucking, uh, like, if you're like, oh, Sam, I'd like you to answer this as a rant topic, put it in the comment section or email it to me at uh, tkyosam at gmail.com. If you email me that, uh, I will possibly uh, or more than likely make a video rant about it. So, yep, uh, there you go, that stuff. But um, it, it's so funny because like when I when I record these at home, I know that some of you guys don't like it, but uh, you know, I mean, I have all this footage. I want to use it, right? And so, um, but it's just it's funny because it's like some people are like, ah, I don't like it. It doesn't feel natural. And I'm like, if I'm following the video along while recording, then like, uh, who gives a shit? You know, I'll just turn down the camera volume so you can see still hear the background. And, uh, but you still get my voice recording. And I feel like I'm more on point and focused when I do this shit anyway, you know? I mean, like, that's one of the things that's just, like, one of my, one of my natural-born talents is that I just got the gift of gab. I could talk for hours and hours and hours, you know? Just used to entertaining people. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, obviously I don't want to have all my rants be like this from now on but if there's going to be certain days where i'm like hey look i just couldn't go out and get some motorcycle footage because i want every rant to be at least an hour long you know and i know i know it's it takes me a while to get into the topics here but i feel like it's just like this is not just like a boom boom bam informational video there you go you're done like this isn't like that's not what these, these videos are they're like kind of like a slow burn hanging out with your buddy like you're, you're listening to your buddy's recording because uh, you like the way he talks and you like his opinions and they seem very similar to yours you know like i like that uh, feel that aura that atmosphere that I give off of when I make these videos and look at this oh I loved riding down this road I know it's so stupid but it's just like uh, because when I lived in Chiba I didn't have a motorcycle but just going under this road like and, and not getting sprayed in the face of rain for some reason I don't even know why they made the roof for this part of the road but it's just it's so nice it probably has to do with the soundproofing or something here but uh, I just love it it's great um, it's just life's little simple pleasures, right? But um, anyway, I know I, I'm just saying that like I know that it takes me a while to get into the topic and I do that one just to kind of warm up my brain But also two, it's just like, you know, this isn't just like an informational video. You want that? Just go Google it read it. It'll be quicker You know, this is more of just like a slow burn hanging out of your buddy kind of talk, but anyway uh, Yeah, 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 yeah um, God, I love how the GoPro makes my, my gloves look so red. Ugh, it's so badass. If you're wondering why I hang my bandana like that when I'm riding, uh, you know, a lot of people thought, like, why did I start wearing bandanas? Like, even if you watch some of my earliest videos, I'm wearing a visor and stuff. And uh, at first, I just wanted something to hold up my poofy hair because when I put wax or when I put, like, uh, gel in my hair, I don't, it doesn't always happen, but like half the time I get an asthma attack and I do have asthma and it only acts up when uh, the weather changes drastically 
or when I'm constipated or when I have hair gel in my head. And that's one of the reasons why I grew my hair out, just because I wouldn't need to use wax or hair gel, you know? All you got to do is just put some coconut oil in there while it's damp and, you know, brush that shit out and you're good to go, you know, just get a hair tie. But my bandanas, one of the reasons why I wear them is just because I'm sweating all the time, guys. Like, being a fat guy, you just sweat. And uh, so I always have the bandanas on, especially when I'm going out, just because they, they block the sweat from hitting my eyes. And plus, I, I like the feel of it, you know? Like, having long hair that just sways over the top of the bandana, it just, it's it's a feeling I can't describe. And look at me, I went the wrong way, so I had to do a U-turn here. And uh, look at that, it's the monorail. It, fucking Chiba is so spread out, the monorail it does not really help at all. They could have just replaced that system with buses, and it would have been fine. The monorail in Tokyo, it's too, it's not big enough, you know. It's It stretches out partially through the city, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's tough arenas, you know. But, uh, yeah, I hang my bandana like that to dry it, because it's all sweaty and shit, especially on the hot days like the one I filmed this on, so... Yeah. That's the that's the excuse behind that because when I hang my bandana like that, it uh, it dries, so it's nice. But uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, we're ten minutes into it. Let's just <laughs> let's just get into the topic because I, I you know again whenever I do these uh, rants from now on, I'd like them to be an hour. Like I want you guys to. Like, you know, for certain videos and certain people that I listen to where it's just talking head videos, I usually wait, like, till the end of the month and then I just binge all their stuff. I mean, I do that with people like uh, The Quartering or, like, It's a Gundam um, or, like, Oliver Harper when he's talking about movies. Like, I try to, like, I save the podcast and talking videos for the beginning of the morning usually. Like, I don't know what your guy's morning routine is, but for me... Uh, it was so funny when I went to America, uh, you know, I'm so used to watching Philip DeFranco in the morning that I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, Philip DeFranco, fuck yeah, you know, doing all this shit. And, um, it, like Philip DeFranco always uploads his videos at 8 a.m. Tokyo time, which is great because that's the time that I get up, at, you know, get out of my bed during most of the day. So I get to get up, I go take a shit and then I just listen to Philip DeFranco and recently he's making... Uh, videos that are like 20 to 30 minutes long. I get my coffee in, you know, check my email, and it's all good, you know. It's all good stuff. Good, good, good news bears. And there's no bad news bears there. It's good news bears. But, um, you know, just having that piece of uh, just talking, not super high editing bullshit. Like, whenever I watch something that has high editing, I do it because I want to turn off my brain, you know. I just want to turn off my brain and not focus on shit. And, uh, but when it comes to the morning, I want to focus on other stuff, but I still want to hear some talking, you know? And that's another thing, too. If you guys have any podcasts that you like, let me know uh, in the comments down below. But, yeah, somebody uh, emailed me, uh, like, about, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, and they're like, hey, I just moved to Japan. I'm an ALT. And uh, even though, like, you know, the, the everything's in yen and I get paid in yen, uh, like, you know, I, how do you live frugally, blah, 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 in Japan, like, I'm having a hard time with it, so, yeah, I thought I'd give you guys some, uh, you know, pointers or whatever, look at me, I, am I on the regular paid, uh, I think I'm on the regular road still, look at all that green still, again, like, look at those bushes, they seem somewhat manicured, and the trees seem somewhat cut, but, uh, yeah, man, Chiba, oh. I'm so happy. I got spaghetti fixed up. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to you guys who donated for spaghetti's uh, repairs. I, I forgot specifically who donated. I think it was, um, yeah, I want to say, uh, dum, dum, dum. there was uh, Nate 8 or something. God damn it. I'm sorry. I can't remember. Fucking, uh, if I remember, I will put it in the comment section. But thank you guys who donated for spaghetti getting repaired. Uh, he had a... Um, like, where the gears get shifted and where the chain moves around, there was, like, a, a loose baron, like, a loose bearing or something. And uh, also, Spaghetti had a thing on the right side of his tire, which was, like, caused by rain damage or something. I don't know what happened. But anyway, uh, point is, we got the parts replaced, and we got them, um, and, you know, like, the guy replaced it, you know. And, uh, yeah, you guys basically paid for the repairs, so I will 
Uh, you know, this month you guys also donated to have Papa Tetsu and I go out and do a camping trip, so I want to do that. Well, Tetsu and I are still trying to, you know, I, my schedule is always flexible, you know? Like, usually I have either a TV job or a translator job or interpreting job, but Tetsu's the one with the full-time job, so we kind of got to match to his schedule. But uh, I've got my camping gear here, and it's itching to have a go. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, just something about camping just gives you such a, uh, appreciation for living the way that you do. Like, I was listening to this podcast the other day, or was it a podcast? Uh, ah, what was it? What was it? I think it was maybe Joe Rogan or something, but they're talking about how, um, how, like, Vietnam vets, uh, like, this guy was talking about, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 it was that, uh, interview soft white underbelly guy where he was interviewing a divorce lawyer and he was that divorce lawyer was talking about his father and like his family growing up and he said like my dad was in Vietnam and you know when he came back yeah, you know there's no tinder there's nothing he just he meets a woman in a bar and then he meets another woman in a bar and he invites all of them to come see him uh, during his whatever thing you know uh, during his sailor camp uh, whatever fucking training and uh, his his mom showed up there and or what is it, like the guy's future wife showed up and she's like you tell all these other women to leave right now or else I'm not or else I'm not staying and anyway they stayed together for like 50 plus years until the guy's mom uh, until that divorce lawyer's mom died and then uh, the dad got remarried like right after that and he's like my dad you know like he was just you know it's like he came out of world war uh, you know he grew up for World War, like, you know, at the end of World War Two, and then he's, like, you know, going through and participating in the Vietnam War, and it's, like, back then, guys were just, everyone was so grateful to be alive, you know? There wasn't such a narcissistic culture back then where we just had, like, fucking uh, marketing just shoving in our face saying, consume, 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 it's all about you, you're the main character, go, go, go! You know, uh, people, I don't know if the, you could say they were more humble, but it's just, like, they had more... Uh, basic and simple and like in your face priorities of like yeah I want to have a family we're going to live in this big house and uh, you know you're going to take care of the kids and I'm going to go to work and I'm going to make money like like the goals were really simple back then because these people just they're like yeah this is what we're going to do and um, you know, I, I, I want to blame uh, it's not just TV because people I don't know about you guys I don't even watch TV anymore it's just all online shit I gotta blame the online sphere of media. Like, everyone has a computer in their fucking pocket these days, and they're getting told, you know, it's just they're. It's easy to lose priorities when you have all these viral one minute videos. Let me pull that fucking shit off the bandana. God damn it. Shit getting stuck there. Yeah, it's like, you know, you, you lose all these priorities when you have all these viral one minute videos to distract you from doing what you wanna do, right? And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, um,. What was the point I was trying to make with this story, bringing it up? It's just, uh, I think it's easy to lose your eyes on the prize of what you want when you're being constantly distracted by everything, you know? And uh, it's just, uh, the oh yeah, yeah, this is the point I was trying to make. It's like, he was just like, the point, the whole thing I took away from that talk was that like my dad and his generations of people were just happy to be alive. They're like, okay, I'm alive, I don't care if I'm poor. Or if we're struggling, like, what's important to me is finding a woman who gets me uh, enough to have a family and stick by me. And we're going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to have some hardships, but, you know, we're going to build something together, me and this person. And I love that. I love that mentality of just thinking like that, you know. And, um, and anyway, anyway, it's just uh, I feel like a lot of people aren't grateful these days <laughs> just to be alive in general, you know. Like, it still freaking boggles my mind that it's, like, uh, that whole shit's going on of Israel and Palestine right now. And, like, I literally got offered a job a week or two before that to go there, like, two days into that, like, you know, like, I would have arrived early. And then that conflict would have happened while I was in Israel. And the whole reason I just didn't take it was because I'm, like... Uh, nah, you know, because I was going to get paid to go abroad, and I was just like, nah, it's going to fucking... I was like, that place is sketch, <laughs> you know? And, like, I don't care if I'm getting a free plane ticket to go somewhere uh, for, like... And the, the pay wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that good either, so I'm just like, eh. And then, like, literally, like, two days into what that job would have been, there's already this conflict going on, and some asshole got sent there instead of me. I basically got Seth MacFarlane, uh, you know... Uh, lucky with that, you know, I could be dead right now, 
because of that shit. And um, I don't know. It's just like I don't think enough people are are put like they don't have that put in their face where they're just like, hey man, be grateful you're alive and stuff, you know. And it's like, oh shit. Yeah, you're right. You know, I got to show that I'm grateful for this stuff, that I'm grateful for having this life and whatever, you know. And, um, and anyway, I don't know. I just, uh, I think one of the things that we got to do is just people lose priority over what is important to them, what they're trying to get done, you know, in their lives. And uh, for me, for me, all I want to do is just like, you know, for a while, I'm just like, I want to be in Japan. And it's like, okay, you're in Japan. That's cool. So what else is your priority? And I'm like, well, I want to, uh, you know, I want to learn Japanese. Uh, I want to get Japanese girlfriend. You know, I want to find a job that is more, uh, the, I don't know. I want to try all these different jobs until I figure out what kind of job I want to do. And I want to surround myself with interesting people that can help me as much as I can help them, you know, and all, all this stuff, right? I just want to fucking, uh, like, I think, uh, like, God, as much as I do not like Oprah, <laughs> is Pop a Tico quoting Oprah? Yeah, as much as I don't like Oprah Winfrey, uh, I love this quote uh, that she had, like, um, I saw this on, like, an Instagram reel or something, and this guy's like, how do people get what they want? And she's like, first, you got to know what you want, you know? You got to know what you want first before you fucking go out and get it, right? And I think a lot of people, they kind of have an idea of what they want, but they don't know what they want, you know? Like, they, they kind of have an idea of what they want, but they don't really know, you know? And it, I think that's the big thing. It's like they, um, like, you got to figure out what you want first. And it's like, for me, I just wanted to be in Japan. I wanted to see if I could, you know, if I like this culture, maybe go live in another Asian country after I got my fill of Japan. You know, I wanted to learn Japanese well enough that I could watch manga or like read manga and watch anime. You know, like I wanted to just try all that different shit, right? And uh, just, uh, and then like all these bonuses came from me living in Japan, like uh, meeting people from all around the world, you know? It's like you live in America, and America's the country for everybody, right? As long as you learn English, you're pretty much American. Uh, like, you know, if you could learn to speak fluent English in America, people will just think, oh, you're American, or like you're a guy who moved to America a long time ago. But it's like uh, you move to Japan, and it's like you're automatically cool with a bunch of other foreigners because you're a foreigner too. And look at this fucking jackass. You're not even allowed to cross the fucking lane here because it's yellow. And this guy's doing it anyway because he's jackass. But it's okay because I'm, I'm, I'm lane splitting right now too. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this, you know, this is one of the reasons why you want to take the toll road. And I'm not taking the toll road back to Tokyo right now because like, you save like 10 or 15 bucks by not taking the toll road. But uh, you got to do a lot of stop and go split, you know, lane splitting. And luckily lane splitting in Japan, as far as I'm aware, you're okay. You know, it's not too bad. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like living frugally, living cheap. And people are like, well, why, are you, why do you want to do that, man? Like, why do you want to live cheap, man? You should be living to the fullest. And it's like, look, dude, if you... Like, there, there's that uh, thing on Twitter recently where, like, uh, Atsugiri Jason, the guy who is... Um, what do you call it? Like, uh, he's one of the guy. Like, he's an American that comes on TV. I don't know if he comes on TV recently, but he was on TV quite a bit. Uh, a couple years ago, and he would just, like, his whole spiel was like, Why do Japanese people do this? My stupid American brain does not understand. And I gotta admit, it was pretty funny. I, I, oh, yeah, blue car, there we go. Like, it was, it was quite funny. Right now, by the way, I'm in Makuhari right now. This is like, this feels like a place that was based on a Sega a game's uh, idea of what a city is. It's pretty cool. And look at that guy on the dirt bike. It's pretty badass. Two, two dirt bike boys. Um, but yeah, it's just like, uh, what is it? You gotta, you know, I think that you can live cheap and they're like, for example, like, okay, let's, let's get into some cheap fucking advice, huh? 20 fucking 23 minutes into this shit. Yeah. Somebody timestamp it if they want just the, the fucking tips in the comment section. Somebody timestamp this. So it's like 23 minutes is when you finally start talking about being cheap. But it's just like, look, guys, like I had a rule. OK, so my rule, like the, the in general rule is that your rent and utilities should be maximum one third of your salary. Right. So if you're making like like two grand a month 
after utilities and taxes and everything, your your salary, what is it? It's like your your utilities and your rent and shit, right? Should be like let's say you're making two grand a month, right? So that'd be like six hundred or seven hundred bucks, roughly, right? And um, and so it's like, well, for me, I wanted like when I first came to Japan for the first couple of years, my whole thing was like it needs to be one fifth the price of everything. So like I lived, I, I remember like one of the first apartments I lived in it was like fifty eight thousand yen a month, which I don't know how much it is in American right now, but let's just say five hundred eighty. Like, cause like people always convert the different things, right? Like, look at me. I'm pointing. I don't know what I'm, po- I'm probably pointing at those beautiful clouds over there, but it's like, uh, yeah. Finally, I'm out of that fucking gridlock, and I can ride spaghettis now. Go, go decent speed, baby. Cash, baby. What to do? But um, you know, it's like one of the things is is that I like having fuck you play around money. So it's like I don't like for recently for me like right like I don't really go out to eat that often I don't do Uber Eats anymore so it's like I mostly just cook at home and so when I do go out if it's like oh no this bill is like thirty or forty bucks or fifty bucks or whatever I'm like it's okay because I'm not going out every day I'm not going out to buy this stuff you know and um, th- there's ways to be cheap guys so it's like one is like you find an apartment that is cheap and so it's like. Uh, let's just say for relevancy's sake, even though this is not the exchange rate, let's let's just say that like I'm gonna say this in dollars, okay? So it's like my first apartment, like or my first apartment here was like eight hundred dollars before utilities and shit because I was stupid and I listened to my friend. My friend's like, "You're American. You're gonna want a big place with a lot of stuff, so you might as well get a big apartment." And I was lucky because not a lot of people were in my area. Uh, when I when I moved there, so it was really easy. Like the first apartment I looked at that I wanted, I got it because they needed fucking customers, right? But um, like the second apartment I moved into, really cheap. It was like 480 bucks a month before utilities, and I was barely there because I was working or I just fucking would go and hang out with friends. So like my utilities were really fucking cheap. And then when I moved to Tokyo, 580 bucks a month, and uh, the utilities were the utilities were higher because I always kept my computer on like an idiot even when I wasn't at home and I always had a fan running too because I just I wanted uh, you know circulation going through my fucking room and stuff right so that's uh, now I'm a little bit anal you know like now because I live in in like the red light district and it's all like dirty and shit here like I, I don't leave my windows open when I'm gone because I don't want bugs or possibly other pests coming in here right because they, they can chew through fucking uh, you know wire fencing or whatever so you gotta be careful about that shit right but uh, you know I always have a fan going even during winter just because I want that air circulation going and I bought one of those stupid air filter machines too and I, I tried to be cheap about it but the filters cost like almost half or like one or like one third of the price of the actual machine so yeah i learned my lesson buy a nicer machine that has uh cheaper filters that i can swap in and out of but um but anyway yeah guys it's just like make your rent cheap and you know keep your utilities at a minimum like right now like i feel more productive when my lights are on so i always have my lights on uh during the day it doesn't matter how sunny it is it's just one of those things where it's like i grew up in a house where we were trying to be you know cheap and we didn't keep the lights on so it was just dark constantly in the house except for the sunlight and uh, yeah i don't like that you know it's like fuck it like i will pay a- like that's the whole thing with me it's like i want to be frugal when it comes to things that i know i would spend money on like when i had a full-time job every day I would get a snack at the convenience store or every day I would eat out and get some food before I went home. And uh, and like I justified it because I had a full-time job but I always had extra part-time jobs too. I mean like that's the thing of YouTube is like I didn't start making money on YouTube until like maybe a couple years ago. Like up until then like I didn't make any money on AdSense. I had Patreon for a little while but that even took you know like even that took a while to like build up, right? So I was just constantly always English teaching or translating, just trying to get all these extra jobs. And then now it's just uh, I'm lucky enough that I have enough translation jobs every month or like extra random jobs, either if it's doing tours or being, uh, you know, like being an on-call English teacher 
or an on-call interpreter or translator. Like I can, I'm lucky that like even though I don't really have that kind of stability when it comes to the schedule, if I need money, I can get money. You know, like I'm like, oh shit, like I, you know, I need an extra couple hundred bucks to cover me this month. I just call up one of my translation companies and be like, you got a big project for me. And since I mean, like that's another thing too, guys. It's like nepotism does play a big thing in Japan, but at the same time, like if you can make friends with uh, your bosses and uh, get them to like you, and then on top of that, you just do every job you do, do it like you're getting graded for the first time. You know, like don't get complacent on it because if you're doing a good job and the customers love you. And your boss loves you. That's important. Like you can't just have、uh, like when it comes to English teaching,、uh, people are so petty. You know, like the bosses. I remember、uh, like at this one place that I worked at, the students loved the shit out of me. The parents loved the shit out of me. Like I would send the kids home with extra homework.、Uh, you know, I'd spend time talking to the parents when they would come pick up the kids. Like the parents loved me, but my boss fucking hated me <laughs> because I, you know, like he would have stupid rules like don't eat. In between classes, and I'm like, dude, like you, you booked me for six or seven hours straight with like a ten minute break between like two of them or something. Like, come on, man, like I need to eat some cup noodles or something. And he, and like instead of just being like, look, I don't like the way it smells up the place. If you're gonna eat something, could you at least eat a rice ball or something so it doesn't smell? But nah, instead of that, he's just like, yeah, fuck this guy.、Uh, we're not gonna continue your contract. I bet it was a bunch of little small things like that too. But it's like overall. You gotta have both of them like you, you know. You gotta have your boss like you, and you gotta have the client like you. But luckily, as long as you don't give too much fucking drama to your bosses about like technical shit or red tape shit, like especially when it comes to translating, like if your bosses get like if they know they have good like、uh, communication with you. And you've done like, like a ton of flaws because I mean there's the difference between like remember like、uh, what is it like、um, my my friend who's an Uber Eats. Delivery guy, part time. He was complaining that he's like, man, sometimes these people don't tip me, and I'm like, don't you have, <laughs> like, isn't Uber Eats like five or seven bucks or something now? Like, I remember the last time I used Uber Eats, they had like a, a delivery fee and a service fee plus taxes or something, and now, like, now they want tips or something, and I was like, I, I just told him I was like, why is、um, Uh, and he's like, well, if they're not gonna tip, they could at least give me a good rating. And I'm like, oh yeah, like you know, I remember when I would do Uber Eats, I would at least, if I wasn't gonna tip, like let's say the guy was slow as fuck, and it was supposed to be like a 30 minute delivery, but it took him two hours. I, you know, I still feel like you shouldn't give people like if they fucked up, you don't know what happened, right? You know, there might have been a traffic accident or something. But I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, so I'll give them like a flawless rating throughout all of that because everyone needs to pick me up. But I'm not gonna tip them if they were fucking slow, you know. And like that's the thing too. It's like I don't mind tipping. Like I don't want to tip, but I will tip because I know like the shit that that feels like doing a job like that. So,、um, but yeah, I mean like、uh, like that's the whole thing. Like you can you gotta get the when you're doing translation jobs as long as you get that good rating. From people, and sometimes you're just gonna get fucking stupid people that don't understand what the fuck you're, <laughs> like you know, like what's going on.、And、like the thing is, is like when you do translating,、um, the clients or at least your bosses like have a. If it's a good translation company, they'll have like a ranking for each jobs that you did because most of the time with translation companies, they'll send like an like a project or what do you call it, like a question anket to.、Um, Until、so, like the client or customer being like, "Hey, how was this guy? Did he do、uh, a good job?" kind of thing, and they'll usually say like, you know, they'll give you back a rating. But、um, yeah, I mean, like for the most part, I think Japanese people kind of have the same mentality I did when it came to dealing with the Uber Eats guys, where it's like, yeah, give them a good rating, even if they did bad, or at least like, oh, this was good, you know. And like the thing is, is that you're not getting judged on your translations like a portfolio. Like some people are like, no, this is the correct English. You must do it. But sometimes Japanese customers, they just they're like, yeah,、uh, I need this to sound,、uh, you know, blah blah blah. Lace, like you know, the cool thing is, is like you're, you're dealing with email, so you got the receipts, right? So it's like, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, like this is all about you. It's not. 
You know, it's about the translation second, it's about the client first, right? So if they want to fucking ruin the translation and make it bad, you give them a suggestion, you say like, yeah, that's not that, but I can change that for you. And they're like, yeah, just change it. And like, they just, they don't want drama, you know? And so, like, if you get enough of those good ratings, then you can be like, hey, I need like a job that pays this much, can you give it to me? And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then, I mean, of course, the only catch is that you actually got to sit down and do the job. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, the whole point is, though, it's just like, uh, you know, if you can be frugal, like for me, like I I know, like if you guys watched my last rant, you'll, you'll remember that quote from my Texas uncle who's like, Sammy, you ain't never going to work full time for no corporation because you suck at taking shit. You ain't good at taking shit. And, um, yeah, he's right. Like, I, I, I hate fake people. I hate dealing with passive-aggressive bullshit. And uh, when you're good at your job and you're freelance, you can pretty much dictate what kind of job you're going to do. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people, again, it's like coming down to that Oprah quote. Like, you got to know what you want. And then you just kind of reverse engineer it. And, um, like, for me, my rent, uh, my rent here and my utilities for my new place is the most expensive I think I've ever paid. No, no, no. This is the most expensive I've ever paid individually. When I lived at my house in Ikebukuro, I was able to split that with roommates, so that wasn't that expensive. But I still had to pay 10 grand in order to move into that place originally, because Japanese companies just charge an arm and a leg. Now that's not even an arm and a leg, they charge all the appendages, <laughs> even the peanuts, you know? They charge all that stuff just to move in. But I mean, whatever, man. Like, you know, that was an experience, and I'm happy that it happened. You know, it, like, uh, like people sometimes ask me, like, you know, do you wish that you didn't have a fucked up childhood or whatever and all this shit? And it's like, you know, obviously, yeah. But at the same time, like, I'm not feeling like guilty or like a victim about that because I am who the I am the person I am because of that shit happening. So, you know, like uh, I see these other people that come to Japan and they're like fresh out of college and they're like yeah it's great but you could tell they've been coddled their whole lives like you know like oh, they went home like once a month to like do their laundry or something with their parents you know like if they ever had an issue mom dad the car broke down don't worry son i'll call onstar and get them to like you know they always had a safety net to you know help them and it's like i never had that you know I always had, and, but that kept me sharp. That kept me like, oh, fuck. Like, the only person who's going to take care of me is me. So I got to fucking, you know, I got to do that shit. And that includes money, too. So it's like, you know, you'll find ways to nickel and dime stuff. But overall, it's like, I, I was always of the mentality that, like, look, instead of saving money or being frugal, just make more money. You know? <laughs> like, that way you can you can uh, justify that stuff. Like, I remember uh, when, the first couple of years I was here... Like, I, I had to be frugal, you know? Like, I like you know, my first apartment was way more expensive than I had planned it to, like, pay for it, you know? And my company fronted me the money. And, the, you know, I was just lucky because they didn't do that with everyone. In JET, and I think Nova, maybe, the JET program is good because, like, they basically coddle you, you know? They'll, they'll set you up with an apartment that their other jet had. They'll give you a car that the other jet had. And the apartment's already furnished and everything. And they have, like, a, a Japanese teacher that they're willing to link you up with to teach you Japanese. And, like, they're, they're basically just fucking, like, you know, it's like, uh, the veal or, like, you know, prized horses or something. They're getting all this extra care. But when you're just, like, a regular fucking ALT or, like, a regular, like, kind of a Kiowa teacher, you're just, like, kind of thrown in the mix. And they're like, yeah, good luck, you know, they call us if you die. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, I remember the first day of my training, it was just, it was bullshit. I remember uh, when I became an ALT in, uh, in Tokyo for one of the bigger companies. The they had us uh, go and do a cop training, uh, like fucking um, exercise there, and it was supposed to be about because like the a couple of their ALTs had got caught with uh, caught with drugs, and I can't I won't say the ALT company because you know like obvious reasons, but you guys can guess big ALT company Japan. So. Uh, but, the, yeah, a couple of their ALTs got caught with drugs, and so this was supposed to be a lecture on, like, don't do drugs, blah, 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 blah. But the whole time, like, they had a cop come over, and, like, it was all image bullshit. The whole reason they did this was just to say, well, we had an anti-drug talk 
uh, you know, with a cop for an hour. And it's like, no, you didn't. We talked about bicycle theft for an hour. And then the last five minutes of it, we talked about drugs. Like, what the fuck are you guys trying to pull here, you know? And, like, you know, I would ask these questions and stuff, and they didn't like it. Like, <laughs> you know, again, not good with playing along and just being bullshit, right? And, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the whole point is, is that, like, uh, don't expect anyone to hold your hand. And I was just, I was lucky, you know. But because my LT company fronted me that money, like, my paycheck was super low for the first, like, six months of living here. So I would go and do things like I would go to the supermarket. If you go to the supermarkets late at night, the regular supermarkets, usually they'll have things that are discounted. They'll have either deli food that they made, like, you know, bentos or little pizzas that are, like, 30% to half off uh they'll have like and that's the same for baked goods and all this shit um god like what else what else like uh i was a bad boy for the first like year or so of being here in japan i would buy the child's tickets for the trains <laughs> and just use that and because it was half off and that, actually that wasn't half the that wasn't the first year that was like while i was still a tourist here because i would buy the child ticket and it would do a chirp chirp thing and i would still you know and i saved money that way not that i'm saying you guys should do it and you shouldn't do it because they watch out for that shit now but like that was one way i saved money uh especially when um when i would like uh go long distances or something you know um like another thing was is that like uh, i would pocket my transportation money so like uh, i bought uh, a scooter uh, when I was in well, no, I received a scooter from a friend when I was in Chiba and I brought that with me to Tokyo and in Tokyo they would uh, they would pay you like an extra hundred to two hundred bucks a month in train fare when uh, you would go and do your job and what I would do is I would just like the, my jobs were at schools right and you can't park at the school obviously because even though they have parking they don't have enough for everybody and so I have you know and look at this this is beautiful this bridge going over here like I, so they don't have enough parking spaces for everybody so everybody has to take the train but all of those schools had uh, like apartment buildings nearby and they don't have like you know they had like you know labels and stickers or whatever but I don't give a fuck because I wasn't going to the same school two days in a row so I would just go park my scooter there and I'd pocket that extra money like I'd spend maybe 40 bucks or less a month on gas and I'd be able to pocket the extra like 130 to 150 bucks of transportation stuff now you know technically you're not allowed to do that but I mean at the same time like, uh, I, it actually got to the point where the ALT companies were taxing the, like, your your transportation, which they're not allowed to do, by the way, guys. They're not allowed to tax your transportation unless it's specifically in your contract. So that's another thing you got to be careful about, you know? Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, it was just small stuff like that because, like, those companies, they make – I didn't feel that bad because those companies, they make money – off of stupid young people, you know, that don't know any better. Cause like they get paid maybe five grand per English teacher and the English teacher gets like two grand out of that. And they didn't do anything. They just set up your job. They filled out the form or whatever and sent you there with no training, but they get to pocket most of that money, you know? So it's like, I didn't feel that bad because it's a revolving door. You know, as soon as somebody gets comfortable in that job or they're doing good, they get rid of that person or they move them because they don't want to pay that person extra. They don't want to actually because if they do it with one person, all these other people are going to expect it, too. So they try to, like, pump people out, like you know, through the staff as much as possible, you know, because that's how they make money. Uh, it's like a foster parent who like takes a kid in and then they let they force the kid to run away But then they keep getting cashing in the checks, you know, it's just sleazy. It's just sleazy and not good But uh, oh look at those clouds by the way guys. Oh so beautiful. I love the wide-angle lens of this fucking camera It's just so nice. This isn't even set up for super wide-angle lens right now. This is just regular wide-angle lens Oh, it's so pure. It's so pure toe chain Yamate um but yeah, it's like, you know, uh, like when I moved to Tokyo, I got the big picture, you know, like moving to a place that's cheap and, uh, you know, like I learned my lesson about the utilities. Turn off the computer. <laughs> Turn, you know, if you're going to have a fan, make it a small fan or whatever that you're going to keep the air circulation going for. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, make extra money. Like if you got a humanities visa, which most English teachers do unless you're an ALT, uh, and even if you're an ALT, just get that uh, permission to engage in other activities uh, stamp visa as well. You can do 
all this extra English teaching on the side, guys. And usually that pays anywhere from like 20 to like 50 bucks, depending on the place that you're teaching at. And so all you got to do is just shotgun that resume out to a bunch of just boom, just shotgun blast. Just spray it out to all these different places and see if some of them bite and they want to hire you. And like, it's easy. You could easily make over 300,000 yen a month. And then if you're making the cheap rent, uh, you're eating frugally. And that's another thing too, guys. Like for like, it took me like, 12 13 years or whatever into being in japan before i fucking I, it's not that i didn't discover this place i just didn't know how to cook but like go to gyomu super just type in g y o uh, for anybody who's watching this type this in the comment section so people know g y o uh m uh gyomu m u yeah so g y o m u supermarket type in gyomu supermarket if you go to a place like that every town in Japan has that and that basically lets you buy stuff in bulk for way cheaper than the supermarket the only catch though is that like the supermarkets don't look nice and uh, and you know you need the storage space for it which is why I have my freezer in my fucking in my tiny ass uh, Tokyo apartment I have a fridge and a freezer just because I can freeze a bunch of the stuff like meats can keep like what if you get pork or beef actually somebody uh, correct me in the comments section because I feel like I'm going to get this wrong. But you like pork or beef can keep for like at least six months, I think. So uh, I know fish only keeps for like two months. The same thing with chicken. But, um, you know, so like what I do is I'll go to the Gyoma Super. I'll go to Niku no Hanamasa. And that's another one. And uh, that's a place that specializes in serving cheap, bulky amounts of meat. And what I'll do is I'll just go there. I'll buy a big, bulky amount of like hamburger meat, uh, beef slices, pork. Uh, salmon and then I'll come home with a bunch of fucking cheap ass Ziploc bags and I will just take them out of the packages and I'll put them in the uh, you know out of their big bulk packages and I'll put them into individual packages and then I'll put them in my freezer so it, you know if I want because I eat meat every day so I'm like okay I want to eat meat today I want to I want pork because I want to make a soup and pork tastes better in soup because it's all fatty okay so the night before before I go to bed just take out you know a pork packet from the fridge and you're good to go you know and like that's uh, for like 300 bucks you could get like three plus months worth of food as long as you're like ration, uh, rationing it right, and um, you know, and the cool thing is, is like you can go to Gyomo and you can get cheap soup, you can get cheap vegetables. I like to go to Gyomo because you can buy not only cheap vegetables, but they have extra stuff like they got cereals there, they got cr stuff like cream cheese and bagels. They got uh, I really love Korean pancakes, the chichimi. Uh, those things are the bomb. I love fucking uh, dumplings. Those things are great, too. It's just, it's nice, you know. You get all this frozen stuff. And, like, uh, if my friends are visiting from out of town or something, they come here. And they're like, oh, I want to eat. And I'm like, dude, I'm in the middle of something. But I'll, here, I'll make you some gyoza. You know, I just take some microwave packets of rice, throw it in the fucking uh, microwave. Uh, you know, slice up a cucumber with some uh, uh, salad dressing or whatever. And then, like, boom, you got gyoza, rice, and uh, vegetables. You know, you got all that stuff. And it costs you less than five bucks to make that, you know. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, like, that's the cool thing. It's like you buy stuff that's free. Like, that's one of the things I learned in the guest house is, like, buy as much stuff as you can that can freeze. Because that stuff won't go bad for a while. And so, like, it, you know, I have frozen vegetables in my freezer. I got frozen meat. I got the, I got, like, what I call, like, the carb treats. So I got, like, uh, the the chichimi. I got the bagels. Uh, I've got, um, I, I don't know. I don't like uh, normal white bread here. It's not that good. But I, I get stuff like the pita bread for, like, kebabs and stuff. And uh, I get tortillas for tacos and stuff. Again, like, I call it, like, kind of a carb treat. So... I don't try to eat those a lot. In fact, I'll break those up too when I get them and put them in their own individual bags. And, you know, I, I heard this a long time ago from people that are trying to lose weight. But if you do get smaller bowls and you do get, like, just your stuff in smaller packets, like you get a big thing in bulk and then put it into smaller packets that are just one-time use, it's going to be a lot easier to eat this stuff, you know. And that way, you feel like if you're like, oh, man, I want two packets, you'll feel guilty. Because you had so many packets, you know, and I love that. And, um, yeah, so that's the thing, guys. Like, make sure that if you uh, if you can, start cooking at home. And if you don't know how to cook at home, well, you got to fucking learn, guys. Tough titty. You got to learn this shit. You got to learn how to do this. You got to do it, okay? Just do it. Just do it. You got to do it. Do it. You got to do it, you know? 
And um, I mean, like, hey guys, cooking for yourself too. That's an alpha. That's an alpha dude mode. If you guys can cook for yourself, that's fucking. That's hot tits and gravy, man. I'm telling you, that's that's what a real guy does. And also, I mean, like, you know, the whole thing is, is that I remember one of my uncles told me he was like, he was like, Samuel, if you want, like, remember, everything can be discounted. You just gotta ask. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, just anytime you go, ask. You know, like, it's like, how much is this or something? I don't know if that would work at a supermarket. But, I mean, like, for instance, if you want to go somewhere, like, let's say you got a date with some chick and you're going to go to, uh, like, a, a zoo or something, right? Like, um, like I remember, like, the first couple years here, I just used a website called Groupon where I, I think it's a Japanese company, but eventually it got out to America too. But, yeah, Groupon was great because you could just go there and you could just find what did they have discounts on. And all these places, they just need customers. And the best way to get advertising is word of mouth, right? So you could just go there and you're like, I want a ticket for two people or something. And you could get like a 30 to 50% discount sometimes. And you get more discounts if you bring a bigger group of people too. So, um you know, you could dictate where you're going, and you're like, I don't know where to go. And I'm like, well, just look for what place you can get a discount for, you know? Uh, same thing for, like, sporting events, all this stuff. You just got to look online. And it takes, like, five or ten minutes, you know? Like, who, who can't spare five or ten minutes? So, you know, because, like, everyone's got to eat, right? So it's easy. Gyoma Supermarket, if you don't have a Gyoma Supermarket near you, uh, the, you know, go to Costco buy in bulk if you don't have a car for costco well get a fucking car of a friend with a car and buy you know put like a couple hundred bucks aside and just buy some shit for a couple months you know trust me and invest in a freezer guys this freezer i have right now now look at me where am i going i think i'm leaving chiba right now yeah i'm, I'm like getting into the outskirts of chiba right now i think we're in uriyasu and we're, we're heading out to chiba but i mean guys just if you can go on amazon and get your freezer mine was like this freezer, I thought it was the smaller, medium-sized one, but I got the big one, and it was only like 300 bucks. Like, it, it's almost the same size as my fridge, and my fridge costs like $800. So, if you have the space and you're willing to cook, and more importantly, you know what you want to cook, you know? More importantly, you know what you're, what you're good at cooking at, and like for me, I'm good at stir fries, I'm good at soups, um, you know, I love dumplings. Like, anything that you can pop into a frying pan and easily cook, I like that. You know, you could do steaks. Uh, you can do tacos. Uh, you can do stir fries. It's just, just like all this stuff. Frying pan or a soup pot, and boom, you're bam, you're good to go. Or a toaster oven. One of my favorite treats, guys, is like if I'm feeling like, oh, I need bread or I need some fucking carbs in me or something. Uh, one thing I love to do is I buy these batches of potatoes, right? They're like, and I, I actually spend the money at the supermarket. I shouldn't, but I'm just too lazy to buy. <laughs> like, I forget to buy them when I go to Gyomu. But uh, I'll just get these uh, potatoes, man, and I will, I'll wash them. I cut them up into these things, and then I'll put them into my, um, into my oven tray or whatever, like my little toaster oven, because my microwave cooker conventional oven doesn't work for some reason if I try to use the oven function but uh, I just uh, get it which is fine though because I just get a small little tray of uh, potatoes I'll put the I'll cover the the bottom with olive oil and then I'll you know I'll after I wash and slice the potatoes I'll cover the potatoes with a little bit more olive oil and put some salt pepper and I'll take this Italian herb mix that I got that's like a you know, all these mixes, guys, by the way, it's a lot better to make your own spice mix, okay? Because, uh, like, I saw these Italian herb mixes stuff, but it's all just mixed with salt. And they don't fucking say there, there's salt in there. And uh, you don't need extra salt, right? So, like, for me, uh, like, one of the French guys at the guest house taught me this. You get a bunch of different spices, so I get basil, oregano thyme and rosemary and then I get one jar and I just mix them all together and it smells so good and you just sprinkle that uh, with the salt and pepper on top of your potatoes put them in for like 30 minutes or whatever and boom you got like crunchy ass dried out potatoes that are just fucking awesome and uh, that, that cost me like three bucks right you know so cooking at home is definitely a big plus for sure uh, also, I mean, like, you know, uh, consider getting a motorcycle, guys. Like, motorcycles are way cheaper than cars. Uh, they, they got way better gas mileage. And, uh, you know, people are like, oh, but they're dangerous. And I'm like, dude, you could literally get hit by a car while walking, you know. 
Like, we're all going to die at some point. Hopefully not soon, knock on wood, right? But we're all going to die. And so it's like, if you only have one chance to live, you might as well live it to the way that you want. And plus, there's something to be said about just having that wind hitting your body and just, like, being one of the road and stuff. Like, you are the road warrior, you know? You are the the, the Peter, what's his name? Peter Flander or whatever. You're that guy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, you know, so make your transportation cheap, having a motorcycle or scooter. Uh, make your food cheap, go to the supermarket. Live cheap. Get an apartment, guys. Like, I know some of you need your creature comforts and you need your space. But, honestly, if you can sacrifice that stuff uh, for, like, you know, for me, like, my whole thing was, like, I don't need my place to be super fancy. I just want it to be a certain size. And, like, you know, for me, like, my, my place right now, it has the toilet and the shower in the same room. Up until now, I never had a place like that. They had to be separate. But I was like, you know what? Like, uh, fuck it. I'm going to try it out. And then when I moved in here, I was like, oh, shit, I can... I can sit down when I shower now. It's the ultimate fat guy move. You don't even need to stand up. You can just sit down on the toilet and just fucking wash yourself. And, like, you know, I, I take a lot more showers now because of that. Before, I would just take, like, a shower every other day or something. And I would do it at nighttime, you know. But now I do it at nighttime. Uh, like, you know, I do the full scrub up. And in the morning, just to wake myself up, I sit on the toilet and just splash myself with water. And it wakes me up so fucking well. And, uh, you know, it hydrates the skin, too. You guys are always saying, oh, Papa Tico, you got such good skin. And look at that. We're, we're you know, look at all these fucking places underneath the fucking bridge right here. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, you got to hydrate the dermis, boys. Hydrate that dermis. You know, I spent a lot of my young years in the pool. Uh, and it sucks. I shouldn't have stopped, you know. I stopped going to the pool in, like, middle school. But, like, spent a lot of years just in water, you know. And it was nice. It's good. Uh... But, um, what, is, what else? What, am, what else am I getting at here? It's just, uh, yeah, guys. I mean, like, you know, for me, I don't mind paying. Like, I was talking to my buddy in Canada the other day, and he was complaining that YouTube is not letting ad blocker run right now. And for me, I don't like watching ads either. But at the same time, like, YouTube Premium is, like, like 12 bucks, 13 bucks a month right now. And it's like, and he's like, yeah, that's expensive. I'm like, what the hell are you spending your money on that you can't spare $13 a month? And like, I love YouTube Premium because it lets me uh, play the videos without ads, you know? Like, I haven't seen a commercial in like years because I just, I only watch YouTube pretty much, you know? And it's like, and, and also you can have it on your phone too. So you can listen to music and it's like, well, I have a Spotify. And I'm like, Spotify sucks. Spotify, uh, it, it has like only official quote unquote music. Meanwhile, YouTube, the quality is still the same. I really doubt any of you guys have like thousand dollar speaker setups, uh, even like headphones or whatever to get the most premium sound quality. It's like, uh, you know, me, I'm on like $13 PC speakers because I know if I got anything louder, it would just piss off my neighbors. <laughs> and so this is like a good medium to be like, it's loud, but it's not too loud, you know? And, um, but, I mean, like, you know, like, when you think about it, cable TV is like 50, 60 bucks a month. So if you're just paying an extra 13 bucks a month to get no ads on your YouTube stuff, and plus that's, like, you know, as long as you got good internet, that seconds as a, as a streaming, like a music streaming service, then, like, why not, you know? Like, that's it's not, that's no hair off my ass kind of thing, you know? And, um, I don't know. I mean, like, it's just, like... You, you're frugal in other parts of life, so you don't need to be frugal when it comes to stuff that makes your life convenient, you know? And, uh, like, for me, like, my parking per month is about, like, a, it's a little bit over, like, 100 bucks a month for Spaghetti's parking here. And it's, like, uh, you know, coming from Chiba, when I spent, like, only 30 bucks a month on my, on my car parking, it's, like, $100 a month. That's redonkulous. Like, that's on top of my rent. But at the same time, I'm so frugal with all these other parts of my life. An extra 100 bucks a month just to park is not really that big a deal for me. And that's why, more importantly, you guys got to do side hustles. You got to get that income coming in. You got to make your money work for you. And you got to save money. You got to save money. You got to invest money. But I'm going to save that for another fucking video. So right now, we're paused. We're sitting down here. Uh, this guy's walking by us. He's very sexually attractive. Look at that long hair. So beautiful. The blue bag does it. But anyway, guys, uh, yeah, with that being said, um, yeah, I'm going to fucking, 
I'm gonna get, oh yeah, look at me, I have to cover it up. What's my, what's my code? It's the gay sex code. But, anyway, um, yeah, guys, uh, I'll save the side hustle talk for the rest of the fucking videos. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, again, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, subscribe bell, get notified when a new video comes out. And we will be live streaming after this on my main Tikio Sam channel, so go over and check that out. And uh, I'll be putting the link in the premiere chat. If you're watching this as a recording, it should be one of the chats. Uh, the URL should be in one of the chats in the comment section below. And yeah, like always, guys, thanks so much for the love and support. And again, if you have some rant topics you'd like me to cover or questions you'd like me to answer in a rant, let me know in the comments, boys. You're too pure. You're too sexual. We got 30 seconds left on this. I want to make it a full hour of recording, you know, so let's do this. But uh, anyway, I just want to say you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the love and support, and I will talk to you when I talk to you. Peace out, sons. Yeah, buddy. Yeah.